Hello and welcome to another episode of Industry Spotlight. In this series I have a detailed look into a certain company or individual from the anime industry. I look at their history, achievements and impact on the industry. In this episode I'll be looking at someone who I'm sure everybody is familiar with, Shinjiro Watanabe. One of the key players in pushing anime to the west, Watanabe has had a very interesting and unique career. But let's first look at where it all began. Watanabe was born on May 24th, 1965. While growing up, like many other big anime directors, he found a passion for filmmaking at a young age. What was unique about Watanabe is that he had no interest in entering the anime industry. Instead, his early interests pointed towards European film. But as events planned out, he netted himself a job at Sunrise, one of the major anime studios at the time. He started out doing smaller jobs like episode director, scripts and storyboard work for various Sunrise shows at the time. His talents were quickly recognised as he was given his breakthrough job, co-directing Macross Plus, a follow-up to one of the 80s most popular anime shows, Macross. There was a lot riding on this job as there had already been another failed attempt at a Macross sequel. There was Macross 2 which was slated by fans and eventually kicked out of the canon timeline. This was an important job for Watanabe. Not only was it his chance to break into the industry, but a chance to work with a fantastic staff list, many of whom he would continue to work with in future projects. Macross Plus was extremely well received by fans of the franchise and critically acclaimed for its great use of modern animation. It was a few years later that Watanabe would get to direct his first solo show, and to be honest could be considered one of the best directorial debuts in all of anime. Cowboy Bebop was released in 1998, but despite its current reputation as a loved classic, its initial release wasn't as smooth. Bebop's production was very unique for its time, and even for today. Watanabe did everything completely different to other shows. He started off with the characters and then built the story around them, he added mature themes that would limit the target audience, and had decided early on that the series would end in the last episode. This would not be a long running franchise. It was pretty clear that Watanabe had a different attitude which could explain the reception of the show. Right from the get-go, Bebop had trouble finding a sponsor. Back in the 70s, 80s and 90s, toy manufacturers were some of the top sponsors. Shows like Gundam and Macross thrived off the toy sales that anime would go on to make. That was the plan for Bebop, but Watanabe had little interest in pleasing the sponsors. Eventually, after their initial sponsor had pulled out, Bandai Visual stepped in to sponsor the series. Bandai Visual really were a spot of luck for Watanabe. They gave him complete control to create the show as he wanted. And what he wanted was not financial success, but a show that could be appreciated by everybody for decades to come. When it came to broadcasting Bebop, they were met with even more problems. Initially, only certain episodes were broadcast on TV Tokyo. Despite them cherry-picking suitable episodes, the show was cancelled due to poor ratings. The full series was eventually broadcast in 1999, but even the full series was not a hit. Normally this would be the end of a series. Unless miraculously a new sponsor popped up in the future, a show like this would have been forgotten and Watanabe probably wouldn't get another job. But something happened to Bebop that was very rare for a TV anime of its time. In 2001, three years after its initial broadcast, Adult Swim, an American late-night TV block, started to air the show. Because of its mature atmosphere, Bebop really appealed to the older Western audience. It became a fan favourite and was many people's first experience with the anime. In fact, it became so loved that it continued to air for, well, it's still airing just now, and still being viewed by a lot of people today. During the production of Cowboy Bebop, Watanabe would treat each episode like a movie, so it was only natural that he would create a Bebop movie. They had a lot more time and resources to use while creating the movie, and even acquired the help of the newly founded studio, Bones. After a few years in production, it was released in Japan in 2001, and in the West a year later, again to great success. In 2003, a compilation of shorts named The Animatrix was released. It was made to complement the Matrix film trilogy, giving backstory to various events. The creators of The Matrix were heavily influenced by anime, and Watanabe was very popular in the West, so it was a no-brainer to have him on the project, and he directed two of the nine shorts. In 2004, Watanabe would do his next big project, Samurai Champloo. This was both a mix of classic Edo period Japan and modern Western hip-hop. The mix of these elements made yet another Watanabe piece appeal to the Western audience. Watanabe wouldn't take the director's seat again for a few years, with the exception of his work on a Genius Party short. Most of his work was as a music producer. He also helped out on various projects like Mind Game and Machiko Tohachin. But in 2012, he returned to directing again with Kids on the Slope. Similar to Bebop and Champloo, he used the musical style to stylize the show. In 2014, Watanabe would yet again work on a very unique anime series. He would be the chief director on Space Dandy, a series that had a particular focus on the Western market. The series would air in America one day before it aired in Japan. Both the Japanese dub and the English dub were produced simultaneously. 
Later that same year, Watanabe released his most recent directorial work, Sankyo no Terror, a crime thriller that tried a more serious tone. Watanabe worked with MAPPA once again for the series. Watanabe has had an interesting career. Unlike many directors, he was able to create a career out of his western fanbase. His style itself is a very western style, but nonetheless it's a very hard achievement. And it doesn't look like he's finished creating shows yet. Although his latest shows haven't received the same level of love as Bebop, he's still held high as one of the community's favourite directors. So what's your favourite Watanabe show? Is it the classic Cowboy Bebop? Is it Shampoo? Or is it actually one of his newer shows? Let me know in the comments. You can check out other episodes of this series on the screen now. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please do click the like button, share it around, and subscribe if you want to watch more. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.